These days, everyone is concerned with good reason about being green, conserving energy, reducing waste, and reusing or recycling as much as possible. From our elementary school classrooms to Capitol Hill, protecting the environment and conserving our resources have become urgent priorities for our communities, our country, and our world. For individuals and institutions alike, it all comes down to three R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle. In a world that needs to do all it can to make being green a governing principle, more than ever, these three R's are words to live by. Welcome to another edition of Inside Washington Hospital. I'm your host, John Thomas Mahegan. Washington Hospital recognizes the critical link between the health of each individual and the health of the environment. As the hospital reaffirms its commitment to promoting a healthier community, it's taking a leading role in this effort. Washington's Green Team is an institution-wide initiative that embraces environmental responsibility as a core value. The Green Team was established in 2008, and it includes 20 members covering nearly every area of the hospital. Paul Kelly is chairperson of the committee. Our team is really diverse. We have over 20 members in the team. It represents virtually every department in the hospital. That's really key to making this work because every single department and every member has a different perspective on the different issues. The mission of the Green Team is very straightforward, to create a collaborative force to facilitate stewardship of our resources by promoting and facilitating ideas and solutions to help improve the ecologic well-being of our community and institution. Many programs and practices have already been put in place at Washington Hospital, but there are still challenges ahead in 2009. Hospitals generate anywhere from 20 to 25 pounds of waste per patient per day. Hospitals use double the amount of energy per square foot than commercial office buildings. Washington Hospital currently recycles 40 tons of cardboard per year and averages 671 tons of garbage a year. That's 56 tons every month. We talked with Chris Lavoie, Washington Hospital's Chief of Compliance and Administrative Sponsor of the Green Team, about the impact of our institution-wide focus on environmental issues. Washington Hospital takes care of patients and does business based on what we call the patient first ethic. And that means that all decisions are made based on what is best for patients. That has a significant relationship to our green efforts. The decisions that we make as it relates to the supplies we buy, to the things that we use in this organization, to the construction projects that we do, we need to be thinking of what is best for patients and for the residents of this district. Washington Hospital has an official housewide recycling program already in place, and they are collecting waste stream data to be better able to identify where they can make significant improvements. They will educate the staff and the community about their green initiative. They will increase their use of recycled paper and decrease the amount of paper they use in general. We have eliminated the use of silver in the developing of x-ray film. Silver has been used in healthcare for many, many years, but we knew that it was a hazardous chemical. And by implementing digital uh, x-ray, we have been able to eliminate that process and as a result, eliminate our use of silver. Another thing that we have done is the elimination of mercury. And again, it was identified many years ago that mercury was hazardous. And so we have indeed eliminated the use of healthcare devices containing mercury. Kathy Fox is the Green Initiative intern. Her role is to collect data needed to document current waste and energy streams. The data will help pinpoint areas where the hospital can become more efficient. Uh, a lot of efforts have gone into identifying what can be done, and now it's a matter of uh, pulling things together in a tactical, practical manner 
and implementing these systems through the hospital so that employees can um, assist in the process. Washington Hospital is a charter member of Practice Green Health, an organization for institutions in healthcare that have made a commitment to sustainable, eco-friendly practices. And the Green Team has joined forces with several key environmental organizations to help develop environmentally friendly solutions. You know, it's really important that we've partnered up with a lot of different organizations to help us in this charge. A lot of the groups are there to provide resources so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. They're there to help us. They've already been down that road, so why do we need to go down that road again? We can ask them to help us and, and not reinvent the wheel. Washington Hospital has a role not only in promoting the physical health of the residents of this district, but also in creating a healthy environment for all of us. We should be leaders in that activity in our community. It's imperative that we do this, that it's our obligation to look after not only the patients but the, the community that we're in, especially since we're a community hospital. It makes good sense as a hospital, as a neighbor, and as a community member to lead this. In the rehab department, we have a strong focus on reuse to help reduce waste. When other departments have equipment that they no longer need, um, they call us and see if we could use it. Pulmonary rehab gave us a bicycle and cardiac rehab gave us a treadmill. They need to use their equipment all day every day and our needs are far less, so it works out well. When we come back, we'll take a look at how Washington Hospital is going green in the kitchen and cafeteria with food and nutritional services. This is my linear accelerator. This is my cardiologist. This is my CT scanner. This is my surgical tray. This is our registered nurse. This is my digital mammography center. Washington Hospital is not owned by a corporation. It is owned by and open to everyone in our community, including you. This is my hospital. This is my hospital. This is my hospital. Flannel pajamas get rid of a cold 20% faster. You can clear up pink eye by watching black and white movies. I put garlic around the kids' necks. They stunk, but they were healthy. I raised three kids. I think I know a thing or two about doctoring. Presenting the In Health Channel, a much better source of information on issues affecting your health and safety. Brought to you by Washington Hospital. You're not even listening to me. Sometimes the littlest people can get into the biggest trouble. That's when you call the Poison Control Center hotline. For poison emergencies or just questions, get expert help day or night. Call 1-800-222-1222. If you think you might be poisoned and you don't know what to do, call 1-800-222-1222. With 359 patient beds and more than 1,600 employees, Washington Hospital's cafeteria provides an impressive number of meals every day. It also generates a lot of waste. Micah Brew, director of Washington Hospital's Food and Nutritional Services, gave us a tour of the kitchen and cafeteria to show us how new practices and new products are helping reduce that waste. About six months ago, we eliminated all styrofoam from our to-go program, moved to a cornstarch-based product, which is 100% recyclable. It's about twice as costly as styrofoam, but we felt that it was an important move for the hospital uh, to make that change. And with the support of the Green Team and our CEO, Nancy Farber, we made that happen. We are going into our solid department, and okay. let me show you a little bit about what we're doing uh, in our green recycling program. Um, in the past, um, all of the green waste was going into our uh, mainstream garbage. Uh, now it's going into a green composting system. We're doing about 2,700 pounds uh, a week that we're sending uh, between the salad department, catering department, and our pot area. Really? So is this just for the vegetables and so Yes, forth? for this that, station. 
goes from here into a compost yes. Yes. system. Yes. Yes. And where is that? On, on the uh, it's campus not, here? No, it's not on campus. It gets sent out uh, to a recycling facility, uh, which is part of Allied Waste, and they do all of our composting for us. What was the old system? They were sending all of the uh, trash through the mainstream garbage, so oh, everything was getting into the, the, the garbage stream, and then we wanted to see what we could do to reduce the, uh, the cost of our garbage pickup and also recycle for the, the environment. So you were doing before what we're doing at home now, yes, more or less, right? exactly. We are trying to be 100% recycling, and I believe that we can get there. An example is we're working with a produce company right now that delivers our produce, and they're using boxes. It does go into the recycling, but we're thinking about purchasing some reasonable totes that they would keep and, and stock our produce in and then bring it to the hospital, and then we return it, and then on the next delivery date, our same tote would come back to us. And that would eliminate a lot of the styrofoam, uh, plastic baskets that we, they send strawberries in, uh, different fruits. So again, it's another way of recycling. We're in the pot room now. Uh, this is where all the pots are washed. Um, in the past, we were sending all of our um, leftover foods, rice, pasta, cook foods down the disposal, right. but nothing goes down the disposal anymore. It all goes down the green waste containers. Uh, and it's the same as the trimmings. It goes into the recycling containers and it gets picked up. And that's part of the 2,700 pounds a week that we uh, send back to the recycling uh, center. Perfect. So what goes down the drain goes to the bay. Yes. But what goes here doesn't. Correct. Back into the it ground goes, someday. Exactly. It gets reused as compost. Yeah, this is the dish room. Right. So uh, our tray return is actually on the other side of where the cafeteria is. Oh. And so recycling cans, bottles, uh, plastic all go into a blue recycling bin. Okay. So what is the ecobionics? This is that... our new system. We have uh, one of these machines in our pot room and one here in the dish room. Uh, it's, so it's an enzyme system. So, so it's all it turns natural. grease into Food what? for the enzymes. Food for the enzymes. It's all natural. Which gets recycled. And that goes into the bay, into the grains. That goes into the bay. Yes. Yes. Right. And it's all natural. Very good. I'm very proud of what Nutritional Services has done. Uh, I feel like we're ahead of the curve over most hospitals and food service operations in just uh, us moving from styrofoam to the corn starch product. Uh, and also the amount of recyclable green waste that we do here. All of our green waste from the pot room, uh, the dish room, um, catering, all come here and that's part of the 2,700 pounds that are picked up every week as part of our recycling program. Terrific. Makes me feel right at home. Yep. They look just like the home containers. Sure does. Thanks for the tour. Thank you so much. We appreciate yeah. it. As part of the green team, uh, we have taken a lot of initiatives in the finance divisions. Uh, we want to recirculate our papers so that it's re reused, uh, eliminates uh, a lot of paper being printed several times. Uh, we have uh, start using uh, our cups uh, instead of coffee cups so that that eliminates the waste that generate from the paper cup situations. And then uh, from our financial statements perspective, we use one 60-page document to review at three different levels, so we have eliminated 180 pages of duplicated documents that are previously produced will no longer be produced. Uh, and then we recycle our paper. Uh, after we have reviewed our reports, we reuse those papers and uh, recycle them back into the photocopier machine and make our copies from. And then we scan our documents and circulate to the various departments that eliminates them to have work from the hard copy and they can work more electronically. Next, we'll be getting some insights into the green practices of Washington's Facility Services Department. We'll be right back. When it comes to a stroke, time is of the essence. In a matter of minutes, nerve cells are damaged and within a few hours they could die, resulting in loss of memory, speech, motor control, and possibly your life. But a stroke doesn't have to be this debilitating. Although brain damage does begin just minutes after you first feel the symptoms, if you get to the hospital fast enough, you can minimize the damage. If you think you are having a stroke, it's an emergency, just like a heart attack. But don't panic. All you need to remember is to call 911. Don't drive. Don't wait for a ride. Don't try to diagnose yourself. Call 911 immediately. There is a lot Washington Hospital can do early on in a stroke. If treatment begins as soon as symptoms are noticed, fewer brain cells may be permanently damaged. 
For more information on stroke symptoms and prevention, call our Health Connection Hotline 1-800-963-7070 or visit our website whhs.com. One small infection can lead to many larger problems. By putting a few simple procedures in place, we can ensure quality care and avoid unnecessary complications. By stopping infection in its tracks, we can save hundreds of lives, perhaps even 100,000 lives. Washington Hospital is a proud participant in the nationwide 100,000 Lives campaign. Plans for Washington Hospital's new construction incorporate many green design features, and these efforts have earned the U.S. Green Building Council's LEED Silver designation. LEED, which stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, is a rating system based on specific green building criteria, including sustainable sites, water efficiency, energy and atmosphere, materials and resources, and indoor environmental quality. These issues are particularly challenging for hospitals, and Washington is proud to have achieved this recognition of our efforts. Our green efforts go well beyond focusing on being more energy efficient. Robert Alfieri, Washington's Director of Facility Services, is in charge of everything that makes this facility work. Uh, green also takes into consideration not only uh, the design of the building and how efficient it is, but the materials that they use in that building. Everything from the roofing material, to the asphalt, to the studs in the walls, Everything that's part of it. And construction as well. We have a recycling program for de demolition. Everything they take off site has to be recycled. Whether it's the old asphalt, they take it to a company, they grind it back up and they use it to make new asphalt. Nothing gets thrown away if it can be helped. I mean, we want to reduce the amount of load going into our landfills. So stuff going into the building and stuff being taken out all is part of this green technology. It's the facility services department that manages the structures themselves and the numerous installed systems such as heating, ventilation, water, lighting, and electricity necessary for daily operation. Well, this building uh, was built in 1956. Uh, this particular part of the building was built then. This is the oldest part of the building. Um, these things behind me, these boilers behind me, are very inefficient. They work on high pressure. We need 90 pounds of steam to develop and they use a lot of gas, a lot of natural gas to maintain that steam. These are going to be eliminated, they're going to be removed. The new uh, central plant will have up-to-date technologies as far as boilers, lower pressure, using much less natural gas. So we're looking for different technologies to reduce that demand. Originally here we had three water heaters supplying hot water to the building for washing and showers. Um, as, as they got older, uh, they started to use more and more energy and they started to cost more and more to maintain. So we looked at replacing those. This used to be part of three of them. Right. This back here is the whole hot water sinks and vents. This unit right here enables us to maintain hot water for the entire building, this one small unit. When the demand happens, we only heat the water when you call for it. We don't maintain a stock of hot water like you would at your, at your home. We look at not only the technology, but also the cost and how long we're going to get a return on that cost. Not just what, it, uh, what it's going to take to pay for the item, but how we go on afterwards. We buy something, we look for anywhere between 12 and 18 months return on investment. But we also have to take into consideration the amount of money we're saving on energy reduction. Variable frequency drive is a device that allows us to better control motors in the facility. We use motors all over the place. We use them in fans, we use them in pumps. Uh, we're, either, we're either pushing water or we're pushing air throughout the facility. When there's low demand or no demand, these things will bring the motors down to almost nothing. These will, will gear down. Uh, when there's a higher demand, they'll speed them up. Without the VFDs, without these variable frequency drives, the motors would run 24-7 constantly. But the things that we're doing here on a bigger scale, you could do as a smaller scale at home. By, by doing the same, same things that we're doing, looking for new technologies when your water heater goes out, go to a waterless system versus a, a, the old style water tank, not letting the water run. Those are all common sense things that will help you in the long run and also help the, the planet. The laboratory is doing many things to be green. Uh, we have converted our thermometers from mercury-based thermometers to either digital or other types of thermometers. And we have a lot of thermometers in the laboratory. We recycle our batteries. 
When we purchase new equipment, we look at the water consumption of that equipment and um, our new chemistry analyzer is going to be a waterless analyzer. So as opposed to 11 gallons an hour on our current chemistry analyzer, this new analyzer is going to use no water at all. As you would expect, our Environmental Services Department is at the core of Washington Hospital's green initiative. We'll take a closer look at what they're doing when we return. You know what? Sounds like you've got some kind of acid refluctuations going on. Probably have an over-exaggerated intestine. I'm telling you, a couple of snips, that thing's out of there. Takes the pressure off so you can air out the internals. I'm no doctor, but trust me. Presenting the InHealth Channel, a much better source of information on issues affecting your health and safety. Brought to you by Washington Hospital. You just gotta eat standing up. What is that thing? Looks like somebody's double chin. Must have lost it snacking on fruits and vegetables. Hmm. <clears throat> Somebody's gonna trip on that. Mm -hmm. Washington on Wheels brings health services to people in the community who otherwise wouldn't have access to quality health care. And take it from us, there's nothing more frustrating than being denied access. To find out when Washington on Wheels is pulling into your community, go to our website. Washington Hospital's Environmental Services Department is responsible for providing a clean, sanitary, pleasant environment essential to the care of patients. This includes waste management and disposal, as well as maintaining a regularly scheduled cleaning program throughout the hospital complex and in those patient areas that require a very high level of disinfection. Neil Adcock is Washington's Director of Environmental Services. This is one of our secure document consoles. As these get filled throughout the day, Alex collects them and then transfers the bag into the toter. This is our secure document uh, destruction lock container. Alex is bringing in a, a toter that he's uh, got through the, the building. He goes through several collection points and loads this up. Each one of these full weigh approximately 200 pounds. And a truck comes here on site and shreds it and then it's uh, driven to the plant in Newark where it's baled and then uh, recycled for paper. This is our cardboard baler. These green bins are stationed throughout the facility and these are the collection points where we get the cardboard and then bring it on down here. As you see the pile here that we've collected this morning, uh, we'll make a bale and I'll show you a bale over here in a minute. Uh, this is equivalent to about 400 pounds here at cardboard and we can compact it into a, a cube about uh, three and a half feet. All departments within the hospital order supplies. They come in boxes, they end up down here. We bale all these boxes and the end result here are these nice tight bales. Each one of these weigh about 400 pounds and we can generate one to two of these bales per day. This is a touch-free waterless urinal. We've got five of these installed in the hospital now and we've got uh, two of them ready to go. We've already got new locations for those. And the way this works is there's, there's no water supply to it. There's no valves, there's no water going through here at all. So you don't have any uh, bacteria buildup. There's no breeding ground for bacteria. Uh, the way it works is it's just on gravity. This is a, a cartridge filter and a sealant here. The sealant goes inside the cartridge, down here through the drain. Yeah, the urine passes through. The sealant is um, lighter than water, so it, it seals the unit off. It's odorless. There's no odor coming from it. We've gotten several compliments on these after installing them. Uh, probably seen them in airports and movie theaters and those kind of things. So it's, it's the, the new trend. It saves uh, water, 40,000 gallons per unit per year, 
which is equivalent to about a gallon and a half per flush. Maria is using a microfiber flat mop constructed with double layer microfiber. Washington Hospital uses microfiber mops and there are a number of good reasons for doing so. They're less work intensive than conventional mops. They virtually eliminate cross-contamination during janitorial tasks. They drastically reduce chemical and water use while cleaning more effectively. They're light and ergonomic. Their dense, durable fibers reach into surface pores. They're cost effective. The reason this is better than the old mop, these are you only use one time for one room and then it's thrown into a bag and get laundered. Well, I work here in the birthing center and one of the items that we have taken upon ourselves is to do electronic documentation and we have gotten rid of some paper forms that we no longer use and we have a postpartum flow sheet where we'd have like three to four of these per patient per hospital stay as well as a delivery record and a labor and delivery flow sheet which may also include a couple of days if a woman has a long labor and we use a online documentation system to input all of our records for pregnancies and deliveries here at the hospital. When we come back, we'll see some ways that we can all contribute as individuals and as a community to helping preserve our environment. You don't need to go to extremes to prevent the flu. You just need common sense. Cover your mouth and nose when you cough or sneeze. Avoid close contact. Keep your hands clean. Avoid touching your eyes, mouth, and nose. And if you're sick, stay home. Remember, with a little common sense, you can prevent getting or giving the flu. Please, give others a shot. Mom? Dad? How long should I wait for you? If I'm at soccer practice. What if something happens? Will you come get me? There's no reason not to have a plan in case of an emergency. Should we go to the neighbor's house? and some extremely good reasons why you should. Can you tell me? Talk to your family about what you would do in case of an emergency. For more information, visit www.ready.gov. Whoa, whoa. Uh -oh. Dude, you'll be fine. <laughs> There are plenty of accidents out there just waiting to happen. Fortunately, when they do, you have some of the finest emergency care available right here in the community. You be careful now. Clearly, being green is no small matter in a busy urban hospital. It's not always easy or convenient, but it's the right thing to do. But Washington Hospital's efforts as responsible citizens and concerned individuals can't stop there. Every one of us needs to do our part to become involved at home and in our communities. Overall, the hospital, just in reducing its energy consumption and its water uh, consumption, is helping the community out a lot. Um, a lot of the things that we do here at this facility, you could do at home as well. We try to have kids um, draw on both sides of the paper at our house. Uh, you know, don't overuse something, but use it to the, the best that you possibly can. In the apartment complex where I'm staying, uh, there is no recycling bins kept for us. So currently, all the residents in that area are just throwing everything in trash. I started the new initiative where some of the volunteers of the residents uh, living there agreed to monitor this ourselves. So we brought some beans and we started recycling. Everybody in, in our house is familiar with a story about an interview with the Dalai Lama one time. And as the interviewer was finishing, he asked if there were any parting comments. And the Dalai Lama said, yeah, on your way out, turn off the light and save the planet. And so now in our house, if somebody leaves the lights on, you always hear this, this yell from the other end of the house, I'm saving the planet as the light gets turned off. We all share environmental responsibility. And if everyone, whether it's a hospital employee or a member of the community, does something, whether it's big or small, we can help create a healthier environment and a healthier community. 
people really realize that we all are in this together and that we all have to work individually to collectively make a difference. It's good for the community, it's good for the hospital, uh, it's our obligation to set the standard, to be the, the leaders in recycling, um, and hopefully we can set the example for the community to also be uh, energized and excited about their recycling programs at home. I've watched this team become a, a, a real team in, in action, not just name. People really are buying into it. They're really excited about getting things moving. And unfortunately, we can't do everything at once, but everybody wants to do it at once. So I'm, I'm most proud just to help being the start of it. By integrating environmental awareness and accountability, the green team sets an example to the hospital and community. All of us need to do our part. As we've seen and heard, there are many things each of us can do in our homes and places of work to minimize waste and improve efficiency. They don't take much effort, but the consequences can be very significant. Here are a few things to consider. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Compost. Switch to fluorescent light bulbs. Program your thermostat. Plug air leaks. Green your yard. Use public transportation, bike or walk. Reduce water use. Buy a high efficiency car. Sure, these may seem like small, even insignificant steps, but if each of us pitches in and we all pull together as a community, we really can make a difference for today and for generations to come. I'm John Thomas Mahegan. Thanks for watching Inside Washington Hospital.